come here, get off. Welcome to the Turn On Podcast with your hosts, Erica and Kenria. This week, we're reading from Brown Sugar 4, Secret Desires, which was published in 2005. The short story we are reading is Luzette by writer Daryl Dawsey. We picked this one because it portrays a strong woman taking exactly what she wants. So get your stuff together, sit back, and enjoy. Luzette by Daryl Dawsey. She was a sexy Latina with a mane of dark hair, eyes flashing like embers, 100 watt smile, body by Stairmaster. Afro Cuban, I guessed. She was a new assistant in my eye doctor's office, a welcome relief from the overweight assistant and the pimple faced receptionist who usually greeted me. From the moment I walked through the door, I noticed her, all short and compact and fine, her lab coat fighting a losing battle to conceal her voluptuous frame. I tossed her a friendly knot, gave that gorgeous body a quick once over, and began moving slowly around the office. I was feeling her, but I wasn't going to sweat her. It turned out I wouldn't have to. Her eyes never left me. Everywhere I walked in that office, from the front door to the glass display case, her stare was in hot pursuit. Occasionally, I'd shoot her a glance just to let her know a brother knew what was up, then look away. I didn't want her feeling too self-conscious. The way I figured it, she'd probably seen me in a movie, but was too shy to say anything. I get that a lot. Women will recognize me, but pretend not to because they don't want anyone to know that they watch that kind of stuff. Instead, they usually just stare. Flattered, I held back a smile and turned my attention to a pair of Gucci frames resting in a plexiglass display case. Then I settled down a chair, filled out some paperwork, and waited for them to call me to the counter for my checkup. The whole time, I could feel her smoky eyes burning through my clothes. At one point during my visit, she walked over, touched my arm, and asked if everything was okay. I grinned and nodded, then watched her as she turned her attention to adding new frames to the display case. In the second her eyes had met mine, I knew that my initial hunch was right. The sense of familiarity was palpable. She recognized me. Cool as she was, for a brief moment, she had registered the look. Everyone in my line of work gets the look if they stay in it long enough. The look is a mixed bag of countenances, one expression folded over others. It's one part recognition, that wide-eyed sense that, hey, I know you from somewhere. It's also one part realization when the person figures out exactly where they know your face from. The raised eyebrows tend to give this away. Then, of course, there are the responses the knowing laughs or the red face titters, the uncomfortable body shifts or the sweaty palms. As much as I've seen the look, I still never know quite how to respond to it. Do I smile? Do I wave? Do I turn away? Maybe one day I'll just walk up, extend my hand and say, hi, I'm a porn actor. Perhaps you see my work. After 10 years and 1,100 flicks, I'm not shy about what I do, and I'm damn sure not ashamed. I am wary, though. I hate having to sidestep the steaming piles of assumptions people tend to toss in my way. I mean, if it isn't the voyeuristic husbands offering you $2,000 to lick butter off their wives' calves, it's the morality police accusing you of stealing their teenager's virtue. People are entitled to their opinions about who I am and what I do, but I prefer not to indulge them. I love the advantages my work presents, the parties, the cash, the sex. But for every perk, there's also a disadvantage. Whatever the case, though, my carping didn't apply to this woman. In her, I saw nothing but sheer carnal curiosity. There were no lewd jokes or autograph requests, no morality speeches or judgmental sneers, just a fuck you stare that triggered chills along my spine. I wasn't about to come on to her too strong, Sure, she may have seen me before, but she may not really have given a shit. I certainly didn't. I was more preoccupied with figuring out how I'd ask for her phone number when my checkup was done. The fat assistant called me for my exam. I got up, handed her some paperwork, then followed the dark-haired beauty to the back of the office. She ushered me into an examination room and gestured toward a plush swivel chair. My name's Lizette, she said as I settled into the seat. 
She smiled, shook my hand, then began fussing with the eye exam machines. She then turned to me and started tossing out the standard pre-exam questions. How was my sight? When was the last time I had my eyes checked? Blah, blah, blah. Even as I answered, I could see her eyes narrowing, intensifying. Luzette fidgeted in her chair. Her tongue swept quickly across gloss lips. She leaned closer, pen light in hand. Her neck smelled of perfume, her breath like mint. My dick stiffened instantly. The exam proceeded routinely enough with me chatting and Luzette guiding me through a battery of tests. She told me a little about herself when she started at the eye doctor's office, what she was hoping to do when she finally left there. Not once did she let on that she might have seen me before. She was cordial, sweet even, but as the exam proceeded, she became more professional. The intensity that I felt from her earlier now seemed to have waned. Maybe Luzette wasn't feeling me after all. Maybe I just mistaken curiosity for lust. I'll be right back, she said as she stepped out of the room. I slumped in my seat, waiting for her to come back and send me home. I began to wonder if I'd been wrong about her, about that look she'd given me. Maybe she was just being nice, just keeping a customer happy. I'd already given up on seducing Lizette when I heard her heels clicking on the hallway floor outside the exam room. When she walked back into the room, Luzette's expression had changed yet again. The fire had returned to her eyes. Her tongue was now working its way slowly across her top lip. The stare that had threatened to singe me when I first strolled into the office, it was back. And this time, it was more intense than ever. I smiled and stared back. My heartbeat picked up. My dick, which had softened, stirred again. So you weren't going to tell me, were you? Luzette said, closing and locking the door behind you. You just thought you were going to get out of here without me saying something, huh? I know who you are. I shrugged. What was I supposed to say? I asked. I don't just go around announcing that I fuck for a living. Not to say that I haven't been seriously considering that option lately. Luzette chuckled and sat in a chair next to me. She studied my face for a second, then reached out and touched my beard. Maybe not that, but you could have said something, you know, because when I saw you, I kept asking myself if you were the guy in all those movies that my boyfriend has. I've seen you I don't know how many times. I laughed softly and caressed her hand, which was still on my face. I moved down her arm and began rubbing her shoulder. I felt her stiffen, but she didn't withdraw. Truthfully, I don't even like most of the men I see in those movies, she continued, her voice a smoky whisper her strong hands running over my head now. Most porn is made with guys in mind, not women. It gets so bad I sometimes find myself getting off on the women right along with my boyfriend. How so? I asked. She laughed again. I mean, how can the guys who make those movies envision their ideal of some perky blonde with big tits or some chocolate model with a heart-shaped ass and then think we women are secretly pining away for some crystal meth addict wearing nothing but two tattoos, a Budweiser belly, and his black dress socks? What the hell is all that about? She leaned in closer, her mincy breath wafting under my nose. Her hand had made its way from my head down my shoulder and over to my bicep. But it seems like things are getting a little better for us. She squeezed my arm admiringly. It took all my willpower to resist the childish urge to flex and tell her my gym schedule, but I kept quiet as she continued. I've been watching you for about three, four years now, and you haven't disappointed me yet. All I can say is bravo. Looks like somebody finally got the memo. My dick was rapidly turning to quick creep. Her caresses were mostly to blame. But I was also turned on by her frankness and her aggressiveness. She wasn't intimidated or deterred by what I do. She wasn't even unduly curious. She just seemed appreciative, like what I did actually mattered in her life. I smiled, struggling to conceal my pleasure. I wasn't doing anything, though, to hide my arousal. I casually leaned back so she could get a better view of the bulge in my pants, but her eyes never left mine. So do you always fuck like you do in those movies? Just going on and on like that? Or is that just what you do when you're at work? Nah, to tell you the truth, I'm never off the clock. Ever. She pursed her lips and nodded slowly. I was making progress. 
I reminded myself to move slowly to just get the number. After that, I was certain I'd see her again. So what makes you ask? I continued. Your boyfriend doesn't give it to you like you like it or something? Is that why you're all up in his porn stash? I was surprised when she shook her head. Nah, come on. That's too easy, she said. I wouldn't be bothered if he couldn't satisfy me. It's not that he's a bad fuck or anything, but we've been together for six years now, and I just think we're, I don't know, comfortable with each other, I guess? It's good sex, but it's routine. We switch it up occasionally to keep things interesting, watch a few movies, try to learn new things. But he's familiar to me. I know him, how he feels, what he's thinking, what he wants to try. Sometimes I wonder what it must be like to just get fucked by somebody I hardly know, by someone I know will do what I want, how I want. She smiled. I guess that's why I'm in the porn. They represent an ideal scenario for me. No strings, no complications, just lots of fun and know-how. It's like getting tips from, I don't know, the pros, I guess. As she finished these last two words, her gaze finally fell to my crotch. By now, I wasn't saying much of anything. There are times when a man doesn't need words, when only his body should be speaking for him. And this was one of those times. I looked at Luzette, licked my lips, then pulled her closer to me. Phone number be damn. I wanted that pussy. Right then, right there. I stood up from my chair and pulled her up with me, wrapping her in my arms. I leaned over and whispered in her ear. So what about the other people out in the office? I asked. Aren't they going to need this room for something? I don't want to get you in trouble. She shook her head. The other assistant is out to lunch and the receptionist never comes back here. Besides, there's another exam room. We've got this one to ourselves, unless you're scared of getting caught. I hesitated for a second, unsure about her take on the circumstances. Of course, I didn't care if people saw me. I looked at her and figured, fuck it. With that, I slid my tongue into her mouth. Her own embrace tightened around my waist. And she ground her pelvis against my dick. We kissed, rubbing each other and grinding our hips together. I moved my hands over her ass, squeezing gently and pulling her hard against me as I nibbled her neck. I felt her right hand slide from my waist and down my stomach. Her fingers worked furiously to unfasten my belt and then the button on my blue jeans. I could feel her nails brushing past my pubic hair. She slipped her hand down my underwear. She pulled my dick through the opening in my boxers and rubbed the head against her crotch. Mmm, who's that mom? Then she stepped back, squeezed my dick, and arched her eyebrows inquisitively. I looked back at her impassively and nodded. She moved toward me once more, kissing my neck, my chest, my stomach. She then slid down into a crouch and looked up at me, her hand still working over my dick, her eyes pleading. I stroked her hair with one hand, put the other hand on my hip, then leaned back and closed my eyes as she took my dick in her warm mouth. She worked a dick like a pro as she deep-throated me. Every now and then, she'd look up and tell me how good I tasted to her. And each time she did, i just grab the back of her head and shove her mouth back on my dick. Each time, she'd jump back on it without delay. She must have sucked me for about 10 minutes before I slid out of her mouth. I took her hand and pulled her to her feet. Then I started to unbutton her lab coat. Don't worry about the coat, she said. Take off my pants and fuck me. I shook my head. I wasn't about to rush through this pussy. I was going to fuck Luzette right. I want to see your titties, I demanded. I want to suck them until your nipples get really hard. And then I want to fuck your tits. I felt her chest heave. Then she pulled back and the lab coat fell to the floor, revealing her green blouse and form-fitting pants. I could see that her nipples were already hard. When I pinched them with my thumb and forefinger, she moaned and licked her lips. After slipping off her shirt, I took Luzette's hand and swung her lightly into the examining chair. I pulled a lever and the chair reclined. Straddling her and then cupping her titties around my dick, I began to pump. Slowly at first, thumbing her nipples with every stroke. She bent her head down and stuck her tongue out, trying to lick the head of my dick as it slid between her breasts. Finally, 
I stood Lizette up and turned her around. Kissing the nape of her neck, I moved my hands over her breasts and down to her pants. I undid them and let them fall to the floor around her ankles. Pressing against her back, I slid my hand into her panties. They were soaking. Her pussy was dripping, the lips puffy and covered with the same thick juices that were coating my hand. She breathed hard as I slid my middle finger along a slit of her pussy. I made little circles around her clit and felt her wiggle her ass against my dick. Then I pulled the crotch of her panties to one side and bent her over to the exam chair she'd been sitting in. You want this dick? I asked. Luzette didn't answer, just nodded furiously and ground harder against me. I stooped down until my face was level with her asshole and kissed her full cheeks, biting each slightly. I laughed at her asshole, then blew hard into it. Mmm, she groaned. I turned my face into her pussy and began tonguing the slit. I pressed the tip of my tongue against her clit and sucked gently. Normally, I don't fuck with a woman's asshole too much the first time we have sex. Many women still don't like to consider their asses as sexual organs associating anal stimulation with pain. But Luzette seemed like she really wanted to get loose. So I slipped the tip of my middle finger into her anus and waited for the response. Her reaction was to move her ass in little circles, urging me to finger fuck her harder. My fingers toyed with her a bit more while my tongue was deep inside her pussy. By now, my mind was as engaged as my body. Every now and then, Lizette would moan with sheer pleasure. I could barely contain myself as I thought about how beautiful she was, how badly I wanted her when she first walked into the examination room. Now, here I was, my face between her shapely legs bringing her to climax. When the anticipation overwhelmed me, I stood up. Lizette was still bent over, legs quivering. Don't move, I commanded. I yanked her panties down to her knees, gripped my dick, and moved into her. As wet as she was, her pussy still made for a tight fit. She sucked in her breath as I pushed. Damn, she groaned. Damn, I pushed harder. I felt my dick sliding deeper and deeper until my pelvis was slamming against her ass. Every stroke made her butt jiggle. She moaned and grunted as I made my dick probe her walls, moving my hips sharply from left to right as I pounded away. I moved faster, watching her ass jump with increasing quickness, enjoying the sound of my flesh slapping against hers. Luzette bent over farther, pushing her face into the seat of the chair to muffle her groans, which were growing louder. I slapped her ass hard for good measure. Suddenly, I felt her legs start to shake in her ass buck. It was a struggle to stay on, but I managed to keep giving her the dick. Finally, she unleashed a moan that even a chair couldn't smother, her voice rising and surely falling out into the hallway. But I didn't care. I kept going, driven by the knowledge that I was inside her, that I made Luzette come so hard. Moments later, I felt myself on the verge of my own orgasm. My skin went cold and hot at the same time, and my muscles tightened. Lizette tossed me another of those looks and smiled as I pulled out and came on her ass. I shivered in spasm. I let loose a deep breath and staggered back against the door, my stomach glistening with our bodily fluids. I caught my breath after a few seconds as she adjusted her panties, pulled up her slacks, and put on her lab coat. I followed suit, buckling my own pants and fixing my shirt. So when can I call you? I asked, pulling her into an embrace. Luzette shook her head, reminding me that she was involved. I almost roared with laughter. Here I was, chasing the number, trying not to be too forward, and all the time she just wanted to fuck. But, Luzette added, I'll see you next time you come in and get your eyes checked, right? Damn straight you will, I said. She smiled broadly. Somehow, I knew we'd fuck again, but it would only be on her terms, on her time. I was a private passion, not one to be overindulged. She was writing this script. I just had to make sure not to flood my lines. Somehow, I knew I wouldn't. Then Luzette unlocked the door and in her best professionally detached voice told me I could finish up at the front counter and let me half stumble past her into the corridor. Luzette's pussy had been like a drug and I was still buzzing. Hell, I was feeling so good I barely even noticed the receptionist and the fat assistant giggling at me from the examination room across the hall.
All right, welcome back. We just listened to Luzette by Daryl Dawsey, which appears in Brown Sugar 4, Secret Desires. And that was a good one. It was. He did such a great job of just writing and explaining. Some of our stories are a little lighter. Mm-hmm. And this one is a it's little a heavy hand, little heavy handed, but yeah. not like beating you over the head with it. It was done very well. Mm-hmm. This is one of my uh, one of my faves, uh, primarily because it was unexpected. Um, I didn't quite. I mean, I guess I knew that they were going to fuck, but that was just it a, was a possibility it ju- that it could have just been about the anticipation. And then, yeah, the sex didn't happen. And this one was a good, a good romp. Like you said, um, I know she went home with a good, Luzette went home with a good story. Mm-hmm. And the fact that she had this guy who's a sex worker, porn star, weak in the knees. Right. Was just, ugh. Bad bitch. Bad bitch. Go <laughs> Luzette. Um, I also found it interesting that this is written from the male point of view. Mm-hmm. But um, I like that Luzette was just, this is what I want. And so we're going to take it and didn't want it, didn't care much about trying to do this. Oh, let's talk. Let's be friends. Let, you know, like, right. let me follow up. No, she was like, thank you. I'll thank see you, you for again. your services. Thank Appreciate you. Again. you. Yeah. Actually, that's going to be all. Like, so what you about to do? Because, you know, I'm about to go back to work. Yeah, I got to go back to work. What you about to do? And I love that her girls were out there listening. Yes. Because, you know, <laughs> if you work in a small in a small office yes. or whatever, y'all know everybody's business. Mm-hmm. And they was probably out there giggling and laughing at this man. I feel like when she walked, because remember she walked out and then she came back in? She was like, I got him. Y'all go on over here. <laughs> it's going to go down. Don't let nobody come in here. Exactly. Stay out of that room. Yes. Yeah. That was a good one. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, I thought it was good. It was interesting because while I was reading it, I was I was like, oh, this really is. Like I was getting into it as I was reading it. Like, mm-hmm. oh, this is well written. It's kind of funny. I love that he like has a whole a sense of humor about himself. And mm-hmm. while he's explaining, you know, that he does sex work. It was interesting to hear like how he feels about that and how that influences the way that he interacts with people and not even just women. Right. But just like people in general, like I never thought about what it might be like to be a sex worker and then encounter people outside of that context and how they might perceive you and to hear it. Uh, and I, I think at some point we'll do that with women, you know, who do sex work within on the show, too. But to hear that from this man's perspective, I think I thought was pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that he yeah, he talked about her body, but it, he more so talked about like he liked the way that she tasted and felt. Him. Yeah. And like even before the sex, like that he liked like her attitude and, and her, the way she, she responded. Cool and, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. And I. I like that because I think that oftentimes and it's part of honestly part of the reason why I now I love porn, but why sometimes erotica appeals to me over porn in certain instances, because so much of that men are super visual, although mm-hmm. I'm visual, too. But like, you know, it with them, it's all about the close up of the pussy. The, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that he wasn't just focused on her individual body parts, that mm-hmm. he literally was talking about her and viewing her as a whole person, yeah. even though he even before he had even learned what her name was. Mm-hmm. That was sexy to me. Yeah. 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 And, you know, there is a um, an element of flirting and mm-hmm. foreplay that was taking place out mm-hmm. in the lobby i guess of the, yeah when she was the reception at area yeah and that is so sexy mm-hmm. uh you know like i think one of the difficulties is a when you're single as a single woman you're like the flirting part is difficult and yes. awkward flirting is always awkward but the older you get like i feel like it's not awkward for you though you're like a huge fucking flirt I am a flirt, but I am a very overt flirt. Like, yes. I don't do <laughs> subtle flirt. I'm like, hey, how'd that beard feel? You know? 
I want y'all to understand that that's literally something that she said to somebody, but it was a little bit more graphic. Than it was that. definitely graphic. Um, <laughs> but yeah. it worked. Yeah. And so <laughs> the idea of the flirting um, that was the kind of coy mm-hmm. cat and mouse game that was going on was such a turn on yeah. and just kind of a slow build to a very yeah. hot scene. Well, and that he picked up on it. Like, I think, I know for me, one of the ways that I flirt mm-hmm. is that I make eye contact. Mm-hmm. I was trying to explain this to my friend the other day. I was like, you know, I don't, he was asking me what somebody was wearing or some shit. And I was like, I don't fucking know. He was like, what do you mean? I was like, as a woman walking around, I do not make eye contact with men unless I already know them, like on the street and shit. Because mm-hmm. a lot of men take that as a fucking invitation. And that he like he noticed it, but he noticed it as flirting and he didn't immediately jump to the oh, I'm I'm finna fuck her and he wasn't gross about it. And I think a lot of times that that's what happens. Mm-hmm. And so I like that it was kind of a realistic depiction of the way that a lot of women who are not as comfortable and overt with it as you are that a lot that that's how we flirt like I sustain eye contact that means something for me so that's so funny that you say that because I have lots of eye contact with men Mm. and it goes back to my always trying to make sure some crazy shit ain't about to go down you mean like just like being a nigga I check your head on the swivel I need you to know that I see you because in case some <laughs> shit go down, nigga, I can identify you. Oh, my God. It's so horrible. And it's niggas so probably, horrible. And then probably see that and think like, ooh, she's ooh, checking she's, me out. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you look a little weird. And if you're trying to put a bitch in a chokehold, <laughs> I got a description. Really? For police. Bitch, I, I just, what I have found is anytime, any fucking time. I make direct eye contact with a man that I don't know. He takes that shit as an invitation. Yeah. I mean, but I do have men that, you know, walk up and try to talk. And sometimes I'm good at, you know, sometimes I play. And sometimes I'm like, no. Yeah. I was looking at you to make make sure sure that I can identify you. I identify you. Get the (laughs) fuck on, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, I do have men approach me. And I think it's, yeah, and I think it's not necessary. I mean, I am a bad bitch, but it's not because I'm like, you know, some like hot goddess. It's because I look at a motherfucker in the eye. Isn't it though? Well, it is. But I look at them in the eye and they probably look at that as like, oh, yeah. Because I say all the time, like, what about me makes it like Mm. I have had some weird ass men approach me. It's because you're making all that eye contact. Yeah. And I'm like, what about me says... You can approach you me. Goofy nigga, come talk. Bitch, you looked them in the eye. <laughs> yes. You gave them the fucking bat signal. Yes. I did not realize that. Yes. Ooh. That brings the niggas oh. to the yard. Mind blown. Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> it does, though. Yeah, so I, I am very pointed about it. I keep my eyes uh, slightly averted because it, it, it seems to be a really strong signal for a lot of men. Huh. Yeah. Okay. I think that's something. But so I, th- I like that that was the way that she flirted and mm-hmm. that there was like this kind of coy, you know, I see you. Yeah. And I, I see you see me see you. My shit would have been like, so, uh, yeah. So in Booty Talk 89, <laughs> you did this thing where you spun a bitch on her dick. Oh, your dick. You want to go back and just try that? Yeah. We got Sorry. some space. Yeah, we back. got some space. We can try it out here. You obviously ain't shot. No. <laughs> Well, and so that's what was really, I think, part of why we picked this episode is that they had sex in an interesting place. Yes. Right. Yeah. Like the eye doctor. An, an eye doctor's office on the fucking exam table, which is dope. Like he said, I, I pushed the lever and the bit and the thing. I'm like, yeah, like, you can have some fun with that. Yeah. I feel like they didn't have enough fun with that. No, but they, they had some good yeah. fun. Because you could... Like, he could stand up. Str- well, no, I probably don't go that high. <laughs> <laughs> this bitch over here about to draw diagrams. You're like, well, if you invert mm-hmm. your leg 30 mm-hmm. degrees. I was thinking about some thigh. <laughs> oh, my God. It's fine. It's fine. Um, So that makes me wonder, what's the most interesting place where you've had any type of sex? So it could, you know, it don't See, have to be full on penetration. The problem is... 
I can't really tell you without incriminating yourself. Yeah, but I you don't have to say the city or <laughs> in an elected official's office. Oh. Multiple times. Ow. Without said elected official. Right. Just in their office while they were away. Yeah. I mean, it don't even feel like wild or strange because that was my like office fucking spot. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of if there was anything else. Interesting. It'll probably something else will probably come. I mean, I, you know. I'm like Lizette. If I want it, I take, take it. it. Yeah. Um, what about you? Girl. Um, oh, my gosh. If you don't say it, I'm going to tell you. Which one? No, you share what you want. Cause, um, so I had sex in the botanical garden. Okay. Uh-huh. That was a lot of fun. That's what I was thinking. Of. Yeah. With the, the under the moonlight, the breeze hitting my bare ass. <laughs> Nice. Outdoors, something about doing things outdoors fun like i love yeah. day drinking outside day drinking day fucking yeah outside yeah 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 if there's i, I think i have a bit of a voyeurism thing so mm-hmm. the idea of being so like we could hear people walking by on the street like literally yeah. a foot away yeah and we over here fucking somewhere we really not supposed to be yeah that was hot as shit um where else uh, <laughs> um, ooh, I don't know how to say this without incriminating. Well, fuck it. I don't give a shit. Um, in the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., in various places, <laughs> various <laughs> closets and closets. <laughs> bathrooms and observation rooms. Yeah, places that y'all might have seen on television during on the tour, on yeah. the Capitol tour. <laughs> uh huh. Lots yeah, of that. He was fucking in there. Oh, yeah. Lots of that. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> or like super old and historical furniture. <laughs> I've done lots of car sex. Oh, yeah. Lots of car sex. Um, Including out in the open with people walking by. Lots of that. Yeah. Lots of car sex. Where else have I had sex that was interesting? I mean, various bathrooms and, you know. Yeah. Because sometimes you just got to. Make it happen. Um, movie theater. Oh, yeah. Did that during... Oh, college? Have I had sex in the movie since college? I don't think I have. Was yours recent? No, it wasn't recent. Okay. Yeah, Um, I've gotten, like, fingered in public, like... Oh, yeah, the club. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit! <laughs> We literally had a flashback of like (laughs) we both looked at each other and I was like, Did I just did you just become my best friend? Yeah. Um Yeah, so we went to this club years ago. In Miami. And we were at this club, I met this dude, and we're like just I don't even want to say he was vibing because there was no conversation. We were drunk. We was drunk, feeling the music, you know, titties start sweating Mm -hmm. and shit. So me, I meet. So me and this dude, we're on the fuck. So we find this elevator. We're like, fine, we just gonna go at it on this elevator. So we go in to get on this elevator, and we like start like kissing. He's like finger pop, finger fucking me. We're like just getting it on, bitch. (laughs) The elevator goes two fucking floors it was like an elevator (laughs) club that went from like the first floor to the second floor so we just kept going ding (laughs) ding (laughs) ding and there was a bouncer upstairs and every time he opened the fucking doors were open there i am niggas hands in my pussy my titty (laughs) in my mouth and he kind of looks and then like the like seventh eighth like this shit went on for a minute after a while the bouncer was like y'all gotta get the fuck out like I mean, he gave him a lot of leeway. He gave us a lot of leeway, but he was like, look, like, I know y'all tired of seeing me because I'm tired of seeing mm. y'all. Like, y'all got to go. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was so horrible. Wait, so while she's doing this, I'm out in the car getting my pussy egg. 
<laughs> it was a lovely night. Oh, to be young and reckless Ooh, again. Lord. Yeah, that was fun. <sighs> that was such a wild night. It oh was. my God, I totally forgot. I mean, not that I totally forgot about it, but, but I totally happened. forgot about it. Yeah. Yeah, so. That was a whole ass weekend. I think that was really, that was, yeah. Have you had sex on the beach? Did you do that? Or was that? No, one I of left our the beach to go. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> sex on the beach is not it's cute. It's not, no. You get sand in places sand where it's not is supposed everywhere. to be. Like, mm-mm. That shit hurts. Mm-mm. Don't nobody mm-mm. need no added friction. Um, so one of the things I liked about this story, mm-hmm. this nigga ate ass. Yes. In a good way. Like, immediately. Yeah. Well, she didn't have to wait for it. Yeah. She like, was it was. like, let's go. That was a good, like, mm-hmm. depiction of ass eating. Because mm-hmm. it's. The, yeah. And I like that he said, he was like, you know, usually I weigh, but she seemed like she was trying to get it in. And he waited for her response to exactly. see. He tried it out. Exactly. And he was like, he something I think is true that a lot of women associate any type of anal play with pain. And I'm like, that, there's nerves. That, that shit feels fantastic if you know what you're doing and you relax. Mm-hmm. And we already talked about anal on the first episode. <laughs> yeah. We're both fans. But some nice ass eating or just even just a finger. Yeah, he that was a good. Mm-hmm. And this they did a like to, you know, since we're going to do the ESPN analysis of their fucking. Um, <laughs> he played with it a lot. Yes. Before he there was went lots at of foreplay. It. I mean, she sucked his dick for ten minutes, and yeah. he didn't say how long that he was down there. But it seemed like it was there was like lots of you lots know changing of, of position and adding of the fingers, and yeah, you know that didn't happen within the course of a minute. Yeah. And for her to be like dripping by the time it was time to have sex, he had put in some actual work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was a, that dope. was a good one. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, I guess goes back to him being a pro and knowing that you're not just finna stick it in. Yeah, yeah. This is the benefit of stepping out with a pro. <laughs> if you gonna do right, it, right? Like at least it's least, worth yeah. it. Yeah, at least do it right. Mm-hmm. I wonder if porn stars like when they because because it's still acting and because it's still yeah. a script. Like, do you? Is there really like? He said he's never off the clock. Ah, uh, you yeah. know, he really. He, I mean, I feel like that was mostly a line, but I mean, can you separate? You got to be able to. Though. I was reading this. Uh, I was, you know, down a Twitter hole, and this woman asked uh, other sex workers, mm-hmm. "How are you different as a sex worker? You know, how are you different with a client versus mm-hmm. in a relationship?" Mm-hmm. And interestingly enough, many of the sex workers said that they're more tame in relationships than they are mm. with clients because with clients, you know what you're there for. Mm-hmm. And so you get to get reckless, try out new things. Right, and there's no judgment, yeah. I would imagine, or at least no fear of judgment. Exactly. Yeah. But in a relationship, it's more... Let things unfold over time. Yeah, how does, you know, like, how how much does he want? Mm-hmm. How You know, and so hmm. I think that's probably what made this situation so hot, like... Mm-hmm. She knows what she's getting. She knows what she wants. And so she's he's been like, watching him fuck for four years. I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. You know, without sense. the, will he love None me in the more? fucking preamble. Without the, uh, yeah. Andre 3000, where are my panties interlude? Exactly. She had her shit on before he even pulled up his pants. I was like, yes, bitch. I love it. I yeah. Love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that she just went after it and then he gave it to her. Yep. And understood his place when she made it clear. She, she said she just shook her head, and he was like, "Oh," <laughs> reminded me that he she had a man already. I was like, "Yes, way to listen. Play your." I ain't trying to fuck up your home. Don't right. fuck up mine. Just give me what I want. Let it be. I love it. I thought it was dope. One of the things that we noted about Luzette is that she's a woman that goes after what she wants. Mm-hmm. Have you had a situation with? A man, a boo, a partner, where y'all was somewhere and he was just like, you know what? We got things to do and they need to happen right now. Which uh, probably resulted in a strange place fucking, but. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of notorious for just saying it all the time. And I, I think it takes a special kind of person to fuck with me. Like, I, I don't demure. Mm-hmm. Um 
I there is a partner who I've been with who on our second date, I was just like, so I like to fuck you. <laughs> and he laughed and he was like, OK, uh, all right. Like, like, now? like he was really yeah. like mm-hmm. he, he did. He did. He was like, like now, like this weekend, like he was Do I need really, to like go home and clean up. <laughs> yes. He was really it took him a minute. He was a little taken aback. And then he laughed and was just like, OK, well, let's talk logistics. And I think they get over the initial shock of the bluntness once they realize that I'm I'm not faking like mm-hmm. if I want to have sex, I'm going to say it. And there have been some men who I think have. um they enjoy the chase. They want yeah, the chase. They, and they want it maybe a softer touch. Like, a, oh, let me caress your head. Let me. Act I, like you don't want it. Like, yeah, no. I'm not going to do that, though. Yeah. I do want it. I'm not going to pretend that I don't. Unless that's, we're in a scene. Sure. If it's a scene, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But I want to have sex. And sometimes it's literally just me standing in front of you and be like, okay, want to have sex now? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Make it make it go up. Do I need to put my put your dick but, in my mouth? Yeah, that's fine. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. In general, I find that they appreciate the directness that they don't feel like they've got to dance around it. You know, like when you're in your twenties, where oh God, I'm having vivid memories of niggas like trying to tickle me or like <laughs> <laughs> trying to rub or my fall back. asleep, and then they dick in your back. Out. Like, yeah, I'm like, okay. I don't yeah. need the pretense. I don't need the preamble. We yeah, can like, just say what we want to do. And that's not dirty. And that's, I mean, unless you want it to be like, that's just, just like you could say, hey, let's do this. I can say, hey, let's do this. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I tend to. And so, yeah, sometimes that's how the, we're in a car at noon on the side of a road because your home is too far away and so is mine. And I want to do this right now. And so we do. And that is a thing. Tips hat to you. Thank you. Thank you. I have fun. What about you? Um, yeah. I mean, I when I drink, I get like <laughs> fluffy. I get real. Listen, like when I get dr- when I drink, I love everybody. This like my friends get so tired of me because I be I'm like the one the drunk bitch. Like she look is. at me, look look at me right now. I I, I fucking love you. I want to fucking kill for you and your fucking dog. Mm-hmm. And you're cussing because I fucking love you. Mm-hmm. That's me when I drink. And then you usually go to sleep for a little while. Huh? And then you usually go to sleep for yeah, a little while. Yeah, and I fall asleep and I wake back up Ready and I'm on. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like if we're like out drinking, I get a little frisky. If I'm with my boo, I get frisky. And, yeah, we got to do it. And so I have had lots of car sex, mm-hmm. lots of head on the way home. Mm-hmm. That's dangerous. I know it is. I mean, I've done it, but I'm, so I always realize I'm taking my life <laughs> into my mouth. And then it's like, <laughs> damn, like if I get in a car accident, they're going to have to tell my granny yo, that I died with a dick in my mouth. was crushed between a dick and a steering wheel. Yeah, bitch. like that's, that ain't right. Like that's the only reason that I be trying to like not do it. But yeah. I do still. Yeah. yeah. Like, but so how do you initiate it? Do you say it like how I say it? Do you grab dick? I grab a dick. Do you, okay. I definitely <laughs> grab a dick mm-hmm. and look up in the eye like here we are here we put go. this in my pussy <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. just like that yeah put it in <laughs> no um but yeah i grab it or i say hey let me see you do it let's fuck yeah i mean i'm i'm pretty yeah. overt about it like yeah. i you know yeah like i am truly like role playing when i'm on some like i don't want to <laughs> take it later like no i'm generally especially if i'm feeling you i'm always mm-hmm. generally always down especially if i'm on my period mm-hmm. do you get horny as hell when you're on your period i'm always horny huh i'm always horny oh my god i'm like a uh... fucking monster i'm like Toward the end, I do see a little bit of an uptick, and it has resulted in not being able to wait, <laughs> for sure. Put a towel down. Yeah, like, um, that's what towels are for. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bit of an uptick, but my baseline is pretty high. Yeah. Like, when you're with somebody, you're just yeah. like, let's do it. Yeah, like, I just, 
yeah, I'm always I'm always kind of ready. <laughs> Unless I'm sleepy. That's really the only thing that ever keeps me from having sex, honestly, is that I'll be so fucking sleepy. You know? Which is why I like day sex. I have a friend that was like, look, either I'm fucking or we fucking. <laughs> but I'm fucking. <laughs> Oh, and I'm like, I like it. This is so wrong, but I can respect it. Yeah. So I guess. Yeah. No, that, that's I think that's part of why I'm partial to lunch six because I'm fresh. Well, like, yeah. I'm not thinking about, you know, what time I got to get up in the morning. I'm not. And, and so I kind of hit a wall when I'm sleepy where I'm it's, it happened last night where I go from being fine. And then I'm telling you I'm fine, but my eyes are really going in different directions. Mm-hmm. And it ain't too much I can do once I hit that wall. So a lot of times I'll be trying to, like, do it before. I, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. I see the sleep coming. So, yeah. like, before, like, it ain't no, oh, let's get comfortable in the bed and sit here and talk. Nah, nigga. Nah. If you want this pussy, let's get to it. And then we can try to lie here and talk, and I will probably fall asleep. But in the morning, mm-hmm. I'm going to be hype. And I'll probably suck your dick. So we'll be fine. Mm-hmm. But I can't, yeah, I, I get that's really the only thing that keeps me from partaking. Is I just be so tired. I'm busy as fuck all the time. Yeah. If I'm tired, I'm I'm never too tired to fuck. Because I'm tired. I'm like, this going to be some good sleep. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. Uh-huh. I'm like, ooh, I this just, sleep going to be so good. Yeah. I feel like I'll end up being on some lazy shit. Which is sometimes fine. To That's just fine. lie there and, you know, let your partner handle Yeah. I mean, I'm sleepy. Know. I'm tired. You know this coming You know in. this. So you can so make you're the decision. Get the fish. Yeah. <laughs> but then I feel yeah I try not to do that I feel bad so but yeah no because you you gonna get some lazy dick in a minute so just like, give him some I lazy pussy lazy dick you might not have well huh you know, I'm thinking about your current, current oh yeah no I ain't never got lazy dick in my current situation Oof, lord um uh, I haven't gotten lazy dick but mm-hmm. <laughs> there was someone who I was with. Who you know well. Mm-hmm. Who, ooh. So I eventually broke up with him because he was a lazy person in general. Mm-hmm. But I remember at one point he complained about giving me head because he said it was too much work and it made too much of a mess to clean up. One, you gonna put in some work for this pussy. Hello? Two, the mess is a part of the fun. It is part of the fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So the the Kenry of 2019 would just never fuck that nigga again. Mm-hmm. But the Kenry of I don't know, that 2000. was yeah, around that time, mm-hmm. college, was just like that. I'm not sucking your dick no more. <laughs> so yeah. I and never sucked like, his dick again. He I only know. lasted a few more months after that. Yeah, because it's like, like, how you going to half-ass sex? Yeah. Like, I was like, well, be... if we ain't got no reciprocity, then we can just literally do penis and vagina. I can come, you know, get off, and then we can keep it moving. Yeah, that once that happened, there was a fucking time. You might have slapped a time bomb on the side of that yeah, joint. Yeah, it was just counting down. So I, you know, kept up with the fucking, that part of it, but there was no, I'm, I'm really good at it. Mm. So he was depriving himself. Yeah. Of a fantastic time. Because that's the thing. Like, sucking dick is like, I, that's when I get to show off. I put my hair in yes. a ponytail and I'd be like, look, yes. let me show you what the fuck I can do. That's why early, like, early relationship sex sucks. Because if, like, so, you know, I do the whole get tested, blah, blah, blah. I feel like. Like one of the biggest tools in my fucking tool belt has been removed. You fight with one hand. Yeah. Like that's why I'm like, let's get tested so I can actually go to work. <laughs> yes. And then you got I've had men who were like, Well, let's we can just use a flavor of condom. And I'm like, No. First of all, that's too small. Second of all, <laughs> well, you're not gonna get the full effect. You can't feel the wet. The wet. Like that's part of what makes because I'm fantastic. a pro. I mean, like I like yes, yes gag, yes, yes. spit, absolutely, all, all of that. the things. Mm-hmm. And you're missing out on all of that if yeah. you have a condom on. 
Yeah. It's just, it feels, yeah, it feels, it literally, it feels like I can't do all my tricks if I can't do that trick. Yeah. I need to get some more tricks to the bag, maybe. I don't know, but that's my favorite That's trick. like entry level trick. Yeah. And it's not even, it's not even just, oh, okay, I get to show off, but I really enjoy it at this age. Yeah. Like, it's fun. Yeah. Like, it gets me excited because I get to see how much pleasure I'm, like, when you start squirming. Woo! 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 God. Like, mm-hmm. that's a turn on to me. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like not only are you missing out, but I'm missing out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's a really key thing for me. So, yeah, I just deaded it. So that's that's the only person I can think of that was ever lazy in sex in any way. Oh, I would have had a lot of lazy fuckers. Yeah. Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, hopefully you were more like the carrying of 2019 and said, fuck them niggas and kept it moving. Oh, I wasn't, but I, uh, well, we but learned, we a bitch done learned it's and now gross. I, gross. <laughs> and now it's like, look, either we all sweating and hot and fucking. Oh, we ain't. Ain't nobody. Ain't. Yeah. Like, yeah. So. Oof. Lord. All righty. So. Yeah. On that note, we'll end it on the dick sucking yeah. note. <laughs> it's a good note. It's a good note. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for joining us for this week's episode of the Turn On. Yes. Um, next your host- week, our guest will be. Oh, next week, yeah. our guest will be Carol Taylor, the fantastic and fabulous editor of the Brown Sugar series. Mm-hmm. Um, she has a series of black erotic books. And so um, really excited to talk to her yeah. and learn She really more. created this genre in a lot of ways. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that'll be dope. Make sure y'all come back next week to hear from her. Yes. So awesome. this is Erica and Camria, two hoes. Megan and Clap. <laughs> <laughs>This episode was produced by us, Erica and Kenria, and edited by Ballistic. The theme song is from Brazy. Every five-star review that you post on Apple Podcasts between now and July 31st, 2019 will be entered into a raffle to win a copy of one of the books that we read on the show. We need your help, and we're giving away five books. You just need to post your review and then email a screenshot of it to the turnonpodcast at gmail.com to enter. And please take a minute to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast app. Follow us on Twitter at The Turn On Pod and Instagram at The Turn On Podcast. And find links to books, transcripts, guest info, and other dope shit at TheTurnOnPodcast.com. Peace.